What's up YouTube, Zerk Cashew here. We're gonna do something a little different today. I figured with the new Elden Ring DLC coming out, everybody's getting hyped about it. I'm gonna make one of about mm, 1,700,000 ,000 how-to videos to, for Elden Ring on how to start. Um, I've personally done this about three different times. We're going to do one for people that are just kind of getting into it. Um, so by the end of it, you'll, no matter what kind of play style you want, you should have a good, a good plethora of things to choose from. Um, so this isn't for like the hardcore from soft guys. This is for somebody that wants to try it because this is the most accessible from soft game ever. I mean, hands down, there's no argument. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get started. It's not going to matter a whole lot what you pick at the beginning. Um, we, we skip that, your character selection, and the first little area you walk in, you, you get killed by a dude. Down there is the tutorial area. If you want to walk through, it shows you how to use stuff. There's a little small boss at the end, but we're not a bunch of babies, so we're not worried about that right now. Um, I say it doesn't matter, really, at the beginning, because you're going to make your character whatever you want. You could choose Wretch if you want. Uh, if you want to do a little more range style, then go ahead and grab the Astrologer. Um, Samurai is a solid build to start with. Uh, other than that, it, it really doesn't matter. Pick whoever you think looks coolest. For a starting gift, I would always choose the Golden Seed. It give, it's going to wind up giving you another heal. Uh, do not choose the one at the very bottom, whatever you do. That's just hard mode is all it is. It's a talisman, talisman that makes everybody harder. So we're going to go in here. We're going to go up top, and we're going to get into the open world. And then we're going to head out from there. All right, there she is. Limgrave, baby, open world. And a From Software game. It blows my mind. Won't blow your mind won't blow your mind anyways we're gonna head straight forward to that chapel up there we're gonna grab the side of grace talk to this dude he's gonna diss us tell us we're maidenless you know what we know all right you don't gotta rub it in uh avoid the big boy there on the right the tree sentinel everybody tries to take him on he will oh, destroy you the all the time all the time we'll come back we'll spank his butt later we're gonna head straight up there we're gonna talk to santa claus in the chapel are you familiar that's it okay there's nothing else to say Sometimes they'll just sit there forever until you exhaust all their dialogue when you really need them to move to another place. As you're walking along, grab every single thing you can. All right, this here tells you about the summoning pools. It's about being able to invite people to your world. As long as you don't invite anybody or you don't invade anybody, your game stays solitary even if you're online nobody can invade you or anything so if you're having trouble you don't want to worry about invasions don't mess with anybody they can't mess with you as soon as you do it your game's open it's it's open season all right so we, we go here and you select flasks there there's an update now that puts a little circle there so anytime there's anything new to do and one of these options you have a little circle Open that, and these are all the different things you can do. Since we have that golden seed, we can go ahead and add a charge to our flasks. Boom. So, we want to go to allocate flasks. Before, we had four flasks all together. It, it's automatically set up for three crimson, which does health, and one cerulean, which upgrades, you know, which replenishes your magic. Uh, since we have the golden seed we can add a charge and it's going to always automatically give it to the the crimson flask and you can go in and change you know if you're a magic user you're obviously going to want close to half and half or maybe even more cerulean we don't have any magic right now so we're just going to pop them all into crimson until we get something uh later on you'll get other things to increase how much it actually heals and replenishes but we don't got any of that right now, so we're not worried about it. You can come over here, talk to Santa Claus if you want. Tarnished. And I can also let you know that wine of purchase. I am Carl. He's uh, one of the many, many merchants you're going to see. So eventually what we're going to want, we're going to want the telescope just for funsies. Um, this is more of your multiplayer things. 
Uh, crackpots are real good if you like using items, uh, and sometimes they can get you out of a jam. But what we're really looking for is the crafting kit. So we definitely want a crafting kit, and we want a torch. Those are going to be really important. Uh, all these guys will sell some version of like the base armor, you know, in the first areas, and sometimes they'll they'll sell other deals. Uh, there's different notes that kind of tell you about the world. And then the cookbooks are real important because they will allow you to craft certain items. And I'm not big on crafting and alchemy and blah, blah, blah. And this game, it's, it's actually, it's really useful. So once we get some souls come up, we're going to grab the calf and get from them. We're going to grab the torch from them. Goodbye. But we're not worried about that right now. First thing we want to do. Here, we're going to pull up the map. All right, no, we don't. It's obviously fog of war. We haven't got the we haven't got the uh, the map unlocked yet. But if you look, whenever you're in a new area, there'll be a little pillar. That's where the map is hiding, and that's just it just blows my mind that they tell you all that stuff. And if you ever played any of the other games, you know. But if you ever played any of the other games, you're probably not watching this video. So that's where we're heading. You can pop a marker by pressing the A button, and then that's going to be on the HUD. So that's where we want to go. We want to go grab that map, see what's going on, see where we're at. This is a good area to kind of practice, hone your skills against some of these guys. There's there's just regular kind of enemies over in that area. Uh, if you don't go too far, they're still pretty, uh, they're pretty weak, easy, just to kind of practice your attacks. But these guys are good because you can practice your sneaks. Lock on, always lock on, always. And then you want to crouch, come up behind them, give one of these. It's not going to show you. It's not going to show you a prompt. You just kind of got to be close and hit the quick attack button, light attack. So we're going to see how many of these guys we can backstab on our way over the hill. One thing that's really neat that I didn't know for a while: whenever you're crouched. You can actually hold the run button, and you'll crouch faster, and it doesn't... It doesn't cause any more sound. Like, you're still going to be just as quiet, but you'll move faster. It's it's just... It's such a neat quality of life thing. Oh! Yeah, see, I was a little... I was a little too... Too far away there. All right, here is the main area. Whenever this game was first coming out, this is all you would see. This is a good practice area. Everybody comes back here to try their new spells or new summons. So what we want right there is where that little pillar of light is. So there's going to be a lot of folks. So what we're going to do is peel over here to the left. We're going to go for this side of grace we see up by the gate. This is a super important one. Supposedly, it's just the third one you stop at. But for some reason, it's always this one. I don't know that I've ever seen it happen anywhere else. This is where we're going to meet someone really important. But we want to rest. It triggers a cutscene. This is a cool cutscene. That's for you, not not for me, not for me to tell. So we'll meet our lady. Of the finger maiden. They serve the oh. two fingers. I've heard of finger maidens. Offering guidance. <laughs> and uh, it's an old joke now. It's a very old joke now. You, I can play turning room to aid you. you I hear you. To the I hear you. Yep. Then it's set. One accept. Some She's gonna be our maiden. By grace. Ah, I bequeathed. Very, very important item. It is Use what makes this game one of the best games I've ever played. Distances. It will summon Torrent. Has chosen Torrent. Him with respect. Our buddy, badass Torrent. So now we'll be able Shall to level up let my from now on. We don't have enough yet because we're already level eight. So we're not worried about that right now. Uh, nothing else we can do. We're just gonna get out of here. But, this is really important, 
since it's nighttime, this shows you how to access your palestine and everything. Since it's nighttime, what we need to do is actually go back to the first church where we were at. You don't have to be at a side of race or anything. You just have to be out of combat and it'll let this you warp. Whenever it's nighttime, back here, this is where we meet one of my favorite characters ever. A lot of people, when this game was first coming out, they went through a good chunk of the game and never realized this. Because there's nothing it tells you. She's just here. Only at nighttime. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I had heard tell of it, and upon looking into the matter, the talk I surmised, thou art possessed to call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. She said, hey, you ride a, you ride a spectral steed now? I'm like, yeah, well, I just got it. I haven't been on it yet, but yeah, that's me. As I had hoped. Okay, so now let's put on some stuff. Let's see what we got. That is the wrong button. Let's pop into our inventory. So now we have the whistle. That's for Torrent. And we have our first set of ashes. So, what we want to do, what I do, and a lot of people do, is over here is your pouch. This is, I'm going to get rid of that. This is like a secondary item deal. See, so here's your items down here. Alright. This is all controlled by the D-pad. But if you hold the Y button, you get a second set. So, what we want to do is come over here. And we want to... Let me see if I remember how to do this. Yeah, hit the switch button. Which is why we want to put our summons in that slot. And we're going to put... I usually don't do it this way, but this way a lot of people like doing it. We're going to put Torrent over here in that slot. If you don't like that, then we can go to equip. This is the way I usually do it. I pop torrent in here. So now, since we have some ashes, what we want, we're going to need... Every time you use your ashes, it's going to use magic. So we're going to put just one for now. One back into the cerulean so we can recharge it. So each every time you're at a side of grace, especially in the open world, they'll give kind of like an... An arrow kind of like that that kind of tells you where your main objectives are if you look on the map see they they show that way then to that way that one is gonna want you to go up there where they want us to go now is up here Stormvale Castle we're not gonna do that that's a terrible idea people go there and they spend an hour fighting the first boss and they get pissed and they throw the game away that's why we're here we're gonna run around we're gonna get all the beefy boy stuff we're gonna be a big beefy boy and we're gonna slap the first boss right in his stupid face first thing we got to grab this map so you can actually just run up there grab it come back and rest as long as nobody's like attacking you as you rest it resets everything but we're gonna just try to tackle this first area real quick nobody saw us so let's just grab this map that's what we want uh, whenever you set a waypoint, if you actually physically walk through the waypoint, it will disappear. So you don't have to worry about cleaning your map up after you've been to a bunch of places. Alright, these carriages here, there's some that are parked and a lot that are going to be... Well, I'll show you in a minute. Most all of them, if you jump onto the back of them, I actually have a chest there. It's kind of hard to tell. Every time we see one, we want to pick up the chest. Jump and a strong attack. It, it just tears people up. Plus, it knocks down... Their meter. See, now he's knocked out. Boom. Get one of these. A couple of these. Now we can get a critical on him. Alright, let's back up. Take a sip. Ah! It's a good place to practice because there's a lot of a lot of different varieties of enemies here. Alright, so what we want is actually down here. Run 
run in here. And this is going to kind of give you the tutorial of the thing you're getting, which is an Ash War and a Whetstone. And that's super cool because as long as you're not using a super special weapon, you can put a special attack on your weapon. And for absolutely no reason, there's another set of grace right here. There we go. Alright, so now we have the map. The map. This is where they're wanting you to go. All up in here. And uh It's gonna wreck your shop. It's gonna it's it's gonna mess you up real bad. This is where the first boss is. And people have quit the game. They bought an $80 game and quit it. Without getting any further than that. So that's not what we want to do. What we're going to do is we're going to run around. We're going to do a bunch of stuff. We're going to level up a bunch. And we're going to be ready for the first boss. Well, actually, that's not even going to be our first boss. So, there you go. I'm going to try to remember. It's one of these here. It's a bush. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's over here. This you, brown bush. Yeah, you there. Brown bush right here. Stop if you're if you're online, you yeah, there's always going to be messages here. You smack them. Or you can roll through them. What this is your little buddy. What that for? Some kind of... You were just thank you. I was when I ended them. Woo! All right, so we need to keep talking to him. Nathan, so this is... I He's gonna give us a mushroom. Doesn't matter. That's not a big, big get. We're gonna exhaust all of his dialogue. Okay, that's it. He's gonna wind up being our tailor. Uh, it's it's an odd quest line, but he's a cool, dude. We like him. Here is another one of those carriages. Now this is gonna have something on the back of it. These guys. When this game was first coming out, you had to kill one of them. All you gotta do is smack one of them, and they'll stop. So now the carriage has stopped. Whoop! Ah, don't be a dick! You can hop up, hop up here. Whoop! Ah! Oh, I was opening a chest, you jerk! Don't mind me. Got a great. Oh, all right. Uh, let's get the hell out of here. In fact, we're gonna get the hell out of here right into the waypoint ruins. There's a little spot right down here. Come on, hop off. Whoop. Don't want that to hit you. All right. We're gonna attempt to fight a little boss in here. Back into the door. This is where we meet one of the main Thomas characters. She actually has a a pretty big quest line. I am sorry you here. Say I want to learn sorcery, even if you don't. Ah, I dare say your proclivities are oh, well, perhaps nurtured. One must choose one. I was exiled as a revile. Do you still wish to learn? Yep, it's all good. This isn't gonna cause any problems. Just say, yep, yeah, I still want to learn. <laughs> Very well, but I refuse to anticipate grievances. So now you have access to a few sorceries. Uh, if you've chosen the astrologer or anything like that, then here's a few good ones. The pebble is great. Uh, if you didn't choose astrologer because they come with it, uh, definitely pick that up. It's It doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It's kind of like a quick attack, but at range. Really, really good one. Anyways, she's open now. Regardless of whether you want to learn any of that stuff or not, go ahead and get her because she's got a she's got a quest line. I'll go ahead and level up some stuff real quick. Level up. Uh, if I would say a good starting vigor is ten. If you get one of the guys that's below ten, definitely pop it up to ten. Uh, if you just it, it it's a it's an odd thing in these. FromSoft games that people think I'm dying a lot. I need more health. That's not really going to save you a whole lot. Like, you, you, sure, we're going to want we want vigor 40, 50, you know, later on. But at the beginning, 
it's mainly going to be, especially in this game, tailored to what weapon that you want to use or what kind of play style. If you're using Astrologer and you like attacking from a distance, you're going to want to put a lot more uh, into mind, get more FP so you can do more attacks, stuff like that. Um, if you're using like the Samurai or, or one of the Strength builds, then you're going to want to put more in Dex or Strength. Every time you go up one, it kind of shows you what it's going to be. See, I have to put three into Strength before I get one more attack on my weapons. So that's not worth it for what I'm using for the weapon I'm using now. Now dexterity, every time I put one in dexterity, it's going up. Uh, so you just just play around with it at the beginning, kind of look. Um, I'll tell you that faith in this game is crazy. All other from software games, your faith builds are trash. There's hardly anything, but in this one, it is for the range of weapons and incantations and spells and armor and everything blah 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 blah, blah. probably like strength is still great dex meh even even your sorcery is okay faith in this game is just crazy um but since that's not really gonna bother this play i'm just gonna show, show you where everything is we're gonna pop a few in actually into endurance that way we can do a lot of swinging Swinging, attacking, and running. We're going to get Endurance to 15, probably pop Vigor to 15, and then whatever. We'll see what weapons we have, what we need after that. I'm not worried about any other weapons until I get the Mace. And I believe that does take some faith. So we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, we're gonna do something a little crazy right now. If you're still kind of getting used to the controls and the attack and everything, this may not be your next step. You can do this out of order if you want. I just wanna show everybody kind of where all the good starting stuff is. We're gonna come over here to these ruins. Well, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here to these ruins. There's an old boy here. Good NPC with a real good quest line. I'll talk uh, to him. You do well to stand in this so stay clear. He tells us Don't. Don't. Alright, we exhausted it. He tells us there's You know what? That might be a spoiler because there's actually a, a a real good entrance for uh well, just for what happens. So let, let's just go over here, and we're gonna we're gonna continue on in this area. The best thing that makes this not any of the other From Software games jump. Oh my God, the jump in this game! All right. Classic sword and board. Just hold your sword out. Now hold your oops, hold your shield out. Let them attack once, and then tear them up. This guy, the the buckler doesn't do 100% physical damage, but if you do like, um, like the nun type character, I cannot remember the name of it. Uh, theirs does. It, I always look. Oh, I wasn't far enough. Yeah, we're trying to do the same thing. Get back here. I always look for shields. They have 100% physical resistance. Because people can just wang on you and wang on you. Well, you know what I mean. They can attack you all you want. And it's not going to hurt. Now see the, the bit of damage that I have? That's from shielding attacks. So if I take an attack, it's going to do a little bit of damage. That's because the buckler is more of a parry shield. It's got a good parry window real quick. So... They balance that by not making it shield all the incoming damage. So, I don't... I don't personally ever use them because that's not my playstyle. But like I said, if you can figure out the parries, you've already beaten the game. And jump attack just, just decimating everybody. Alright. There's uh, one or two little items to find around here in these 
ruins, but what we want is down here. So we have a bunch of rats. Once they're all dealt with, we're gonna come up here, open the door, and get the whole reason we came. All right, we're about to take a, a flipping trip, man. Are you ready? Fucking light them up, son. There are no mimics in this game, but there are still trap chests. And this one is by far the worst, especially considered where it can be accessed, how early element of the game. This can be the very first place you come. And where it takes you is just hell on earth at this point. Now, at this point, this is where you're at. And there is no going back. There's no warping out. See, we try to go to the warp spot. They're all red. Won't let you go. We have to find another side of grace before we leave. Everybody in here will absolutely destroy you. So what we want to do is sneak out. Out here to the right. Sneaky, sneaky. These guys are minding their own business. As long as you're sneaky. Oh, I think you might see me. Oh, yep. Okay, that's that's the problem. Oh. Yeah. There's a sniper asshole up there. He's like a little crawfish shaman. He's a douche. He's a douche. He's got heat-seeking little tendril spines. Do this, he won't notice you. And then just run like hell. Grab your souls. Oh! Grab your souls. Fucking dodge roll. Oh, God. Just spam dodge roll the first time he gets you. All right. Now, here's our side of grace. So now we're unlocked. We can teleport wherever we want, just like before. But that's not why we're here. I'm going to pop on Torrent once we get out. We are here because it brings us to the actual anus of the game. The Devil's Crotch, Kaled. Now, you're not going to have a map or anything. There's a map up there. We're not worried about that. What we want to do now is grab a few things that are here. Don't worry about fighting any of the guys here because they all suck. Big monkey testicles. We're going to run over here. Grab this side of grace. Ah, depending on how many sites of grace you found. I've been to determine if you had it seems she will show up again. Whereas I may there is, but I can take gathering She wants to take us to the round table hold. Very yes, well. always, Let always my go. Hand rest upon you for but a moment. I don't think you actually have a choice. No big deal, we can warp right back. I didn't mention anything about it because you never know where you're going to be whenever she shows up. This round table hold. There's a little deal right above. See where the that's my left hand action, which is parry. That means you can't attack. Pressing all the attack buttons. Can't do nothing. This is a safe space. This guy here. Oh, I see. Welcome to I teach in can explore the sea. So that he is going. Sure in way. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you see the side the guidance of grace? Yes. Those are the tendrils coming off of. Wonderful the news. grace sites. Most time you are well. I, I don't I don't know that he cares if you say no. But anyways, he'll teach you incantations. If you're a faith build, this is gonna be your main guy at the beginning. Some really good ones. Heal, urgent heal, yes. Especially if you're having trouble, always grab urgent heal. Uh, it just gives you another basically like another Estus flask. They're not called Estus flask. Another flask of crimson tears. Uh, hill, even better, but takes longer to um, get, you know, to get off. 
Um, so, uh, everything's good. Flame Sling, really good. That gives you a ranged attack. Uh, definitely, if you're playing, I would say, probably at this point, Urgent Hill and then Flame Sling. Definitely. I mean, you're going to use Flame Sling for 50% of the game. May the Golden Order shine through you. All right, we're going to talk to this I don't guy here. We've met. He's got I'm some boss... D. Boss armor. I heed those who live in all the more. Unless you... We're just going to run around. We're just going to talk to everybody. All right. Exhaust everybody's... Ah, hello. I'm... Well, the honor of one... Dialogue. Lady. She's my servant. Take your eyes off if you find her. He's got a... a, a an odd... She has an odd quest line. Servant. She's been my... I've lost count of them. Honestly. All right. I run in here. We'll go that way in a minute. This lady... She's something. She is something. Uh, also, as kind of a hidden-esque kind of quest line, and I think it actually um, does one of the endings. Not one of the endings you need for an achievement, I don't believe, but one Greetings, of the endings. Great I am circums great Perhaps you might doing so She's actually I'm really doing, cool whenever you finish everything. Oh, and you can get hugs. My thanks. Great. Best part of the whole game. Hugs, free hugs, just she's just doling them out. Like they're puffy stickers. You want a hug? Hell yeah. Did you see that crab monster that shot me a minute ago in you the back? I need a hug. Very warm. Thank you. It's the blood that's still running out of my crab crawfish holes. I don't want to talk about it. What you felt just like keep hugging me. You was a Baldekin's blessing. Though it is but a fleeting Listen. thing, I am afraid. Come uh -oh. back to me, should you require another. I will take you in my arms as often as you need. Hmm. I've paid money to hear that. Anyways, this, uh, man, this messes folks up because they think, oh, she's super cool and she's giving me hugs. Huh? Thank you. I'm not gonna get, uh, I'm not going to go any further into that, but, um, you know, you see up there at the top left, the little red symbol with the down arrow, people don't realize, and she tells you, but kind of cryptedly, you've lost some of your health, but it does give you a bit of a boost, but what you want to do, if you get a hug from her, see, it uses FB to temporary boost poise, so that's how much you get knocked back, like if you got just crazy poise, Everybody going to attack you and you're just going to stand there. So she gives you this item, which is a useful item, but it takes your health down permanently as long as you're holding it. So if you get a hug from her and you don't need any poise, you didn't do it on purpose, just hit use. And once that goes away, your health will go back up. Here is the mirror. If you don't like the way your character looks... You can change it. My PlayStation character is... She's pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie. Like, she, she's super cool. Anyways, uh, alright. Here is our boy! Oh, that's our boy. What's Still up, boy? Face. Ah, I like this guy. No matter. Lay out your own. This is our blacksmith. He's gonna upgrade weapons. It'll tell you what... what it takes C1 Smith and Stone, Smith and Stone 1, 2, and I have 2. It'll upgrade it. I'm not worried about this weapon. I'm not going to do that. There's a bad boy down here. There's a real bad boy down here, and he's going to mess me up. But just in case you're curious, here he is. Ah! Ah, yep. I might have hit him. I'm going to pretend like I hit him. We're going to run here and here. We're going to get the whole reason we came here. Now, this stuff that I'm walking in is rot. If you walk in it, it's going to build up a little meter. That's poison rot. That will mess you up. Oh, shit. Oh, I got him. Nope, oh, nope. Too late. Jeez. Get out of here, dude. These guys are a little bit above my pre-grade at the moment. 
what we want to do is be on tort all the time. Anytime you're on tort, you can't get poisoned from walking in poison. And you can't get the rot buildup. That rot will mess you up. It's like a poison, but it's ten times worse. Alright, so these little things right here. See how that's running around like a little pattern? Make sure that dog's not falling on me. Go away, dog! That's another one of those little scarab guys. He's gonna... Ah, where are you going? Oh, that dog got rotted. That's ridiculous. See? Even that's a rot dog for whatever reason. He's got... He's got... Scarlet rot on him now. So it's basically poison. Oh, he died. Oh! Oh, that worked out. Okay. So I was trying to show you that little thing that was running around here. That's another one of those scarabs. But they're invisible. But they leave a little trail. All you have to do is hit them once. And then it kills them and gives you what they got. But since I upset these big poison boys, it actually poisoned the little scarab. That's really neat. I've never seen that before. Either way. That's a good Ash of War. It puts uh, poison on your weapon. Alright, so we're run around here. If you if you get too close to certain areas, where well, there's that going on. Oh, and then there's uh whoop. There's an evasion that happens. You just keep running. We are not here to prove anything. We are just here to get items. As soon as I can remember where those items are. We're gonna get the hell out of here. Yep. Rock Sling. This is one of the absolute best sorceries in the game. If you're playing Astrologer, this is gonna be your bread and butter for half the game or more. I'm still using it. It is a great gravity type incantation. Whoop! Whoop! We don't want to mess with these guys! Nope! Don't want to mess with these guys! Nope! Yep. Alright. Well. That's rude. Y'all are rude. Y'all are real rude. Anytime you have a lot of runes, you should be spending them anyways. here grab the traveler set this is a very important set to have early in the game because it negates that's where we just were by the way if you if you come back out and you didn't die then you just come right over here up to where those guys are and you grab your traveler set very important it negates a whole lot of poison build up and rot build up so anytime you got to go to a place like this you just pop on your traveler set Alright, so we want that in there, but we don't want to deal with all these flipping guys. Woo! Hey, hey, hey! Stop that! Stop it! Yeah! Dual wield, motherfucker! Alright. Boom. Meteoratic. Meteorite staff. Definitely. Definitely. One of the best staffs in the entire game. Especially at the beginning. Just to come oh, to come and grab that. That is huge. That's what we're here for. So let's get the hell out of here. These little areas like this. They're always going to have little golden runes. So anytime you see an area... With a bunch of crypts, coffins, definitely run through. It's always full of wolves. The wolves, I don't know if you saw, oh, see there's one there. For whatever reason, they're not paying too much attention to me. These little skulls that are lit up, some skulls won't be, but these skulls that are lit up like this, they also have runes in them. Usually real small, ones or twos, but you're there, it's free. Uh, you can roll over them if you're on the ground, slap them with your weapon, or if you're on torrent, you can just run over them. If you run over them and you just spam the Y button, you'll you'll pick it up. You won't even have to stop. Boom, there we go. Gold Maroon 1. Also, don't be a dick. Don't attack the turtles. Turtles are fun. One of these is going to say dog. See? 
See? I wasn't even here. I just knew it was going to say dog. The turtles are awesome. All right, don't don't fuck with the don't be an ass. Don't don't mess with the turtles. No reason. There's absolutely no reason. You get a, a turtle shell shield. You just get that. You don't have to kill a turtle. You just get that later. All right, we're gonna want to be on torrent because there's a lot of BS up here. We don't want to mess with right now. You can. I mean, I'm just saying you don't want to do it right now because we're busy collecting everything. If you want to, dude, rock on. Give it, give it a good serpentine coming up here. Good serpentine. Then we're going to peel off to the right. And this little tree. Boom. Another golden seed. That's it. That's all we want. Alright, so we're going here. We're going to listen for a howl noise. And then we're going to run down and grab some wood. That's a big bear. We don't want to wake that guy up. In fact, we're not even going to mess with him right now. Because we don't want him to bother what we're doing. That's what we wanted. We just wanted to hear it. There's nothing we can do about that now. Drop in here. Whoop. Whenever you drop, you're going to go back to not crouching. So if you drop, hit the button again and crouch again. Just run in here. Just free loot. Not, not that it's super important, but we got it. So you come up this way. This is another very, very key spot that I've seen a lot of people miss for almost half the game. This is one of the churches of America. Grab the side of grace. Most importantly, grab the flask of wondrous physic. This is an enhancer to be used once per rest and throughout the whole game, you get all kind of different stuff to put in it. Right now, we got a crimson crystal tier. And that's it. You can put two things in the flask. And most of these churches, America, will have something by the statue. And it's going to be a sacred tier. The sacred tiers enhance the amount that your flask regenerate. So we're going to try to get as many of them as possible. Right now, we found a warp gate right over here. We're going to take it. We're going to warp out of here. All we're wanting to do in here is walk in, get the side of grace, and talk to the guy at the very back. He's not going to talk to you, that's fine. Just click his dialogue once, and we're going to head back out the door. Boom. Side of grace, then go talk to the guy. So, we don't want to mess with that guy, but we do want something out here. So we're going to run right past them. Very, very quickly. Ooh, he didn't even see us. What an idiot. Notice anything important? One of these trees. Boom. Another golden seed, baby. So, just a little side note. If you come back here to the round table hole, uh, and you talk to the guy that was at the warp gate, uh, you come back and talk to the dude with the cool armor, and he'll now let you study... Incantations. He has a couple for now, and it's fine, but it progresses a storyline. The guy in the Beastial Sanctum, he wants death root. Once you get one, go back to it. But he tells you this. Because we heard the howl earlier, we want to go back to Santa Claus. So you're going to be like, hey man, I heard this noise in the forest. What's up with that? He's like, oh man, that's my boy. So then he's going to give you an emote to be able to call him. That's what we're going to go do. And there he is. That's the boy doing the howling. So let's come over here, right above where he's, right below where he's at. Give him one of these. Whoa. Oh, the coolest boy in the game. Lad. Kali sent you, did he? Hmm. The name's... Don't, uh, don't mess with these guys. They they explode and stuff. There's no reason to mess with them. Alright, so this is uh, Everjail. You go in there, there's going to be a boss to fight. Um, you cannot summon while you're in there, so don't rely on that. However, this being the first one, us talking to Blood, this is where the guy he's looking for is. So once we get in there, before we trigger the boss, we'll be able to summon Blood to help. So this is always the first one I recommend. The guy isn't 
too terribly hard, and he gives one of one of the weapons we're looking for. Plus, we get Blyde to help. So you can do it on your own, but that's why we did the whole side mission. All you have to do is, is go there, hear him howl, go back to Santa Claus, get the finger snap, then go back and get Blyde. Highly recommend this one. This is one of the best weapons in the game at the beginning, and it's got a real cool uh, skill for it. So here is Blyde. These are just messages. Here is Blyde Summon Stone. Friendly summons are going to be in yellow. So there he is. The half with blood. Yeah. You gotta, give, you gotta give him a minute to summon. At this point, if you had something real good in your physic, like something that, you know, boosts the regeneration over time or anything over time, you can use it. No true justice. Right now, it's just no. a half heal, so we don't need to worry is about where it. it ends. So when we beat him, we get the Bloodhound Fang. It does blood loss build up. It has a sweet special skill that I can't quite use because I don't have all the stats. But this is one of the best swords in the game and carry through the whole game if you want. So we want to go through there, but there's a bunch of ballistas and stuff. So we want to be on tour and we want to absolutely haul ass. Also, our first stone sword key is here on the bridge. We don't want to mess with them right now. We're going to come up here. Morning Star. That is the one that we want. Right there. 12 strength, 8 decks to use. Almost everybody can use it right off the bat. It does bleed loss build up 50. Instead of, see, this does 55. This does 50, but it's a quicker attack. This is super versatile no matter what build you're playing, and you can use it during this entire beginning area. Alright, we want some stuff in here. But we got a big boy rat right over there. Now, you see that deal over on the left? Looks like a kind of like a tombstone. I'm sure it's supposed to be a doorway or something. That means we can summon our spirit ashes. Whenever that's not there in the open world or anytime, you can't summon them. It took me a minute to figure that out. So, there's a bunch of guys. We're just going to go ahead and summon our wolves. And we're going to take these guys out. Oh, we got big rat boss mofo up here. Flame of Frenzy. That's what we want. However, this is a Church of America. So that means we also... Yep. Oh! Didn't get it. Yeah. So a lot of times whenever you beat like a whole group of enemies, you see right when he died, I got a uh, red thing around me. It refilled my flasks, my crimson flask. So whenever you beat a group of enemies, it'll it'll refill your flask. It's, it's really awesome. It Real, works good for the exploration. So you don't have to stop, go back, rest, and then go back through what you just did. Another sacred tear. This is actually the first place I recommend you go in as far as a boss. Definitely be on Torrent here because there's going to be, well, you'll see. Here's a plinth. I'm going to grab that. That's the map. And keep running. Don't stop. Yep. Right up here is the golden tree. So we want to come back this way. That is a giant down there shooting huge ass arrows at us. Always want to be on torrent down here. Always want to be running. Picking up stuff along the way. Come over here. And bam. One more golden seed. Woo, buddy. <laughs> He takes a long time to reload, and that's what that's where we're gonna get him. Yeah, there it is. That's it. With this morning star, that is it. Alright. The turtle shield is actually up there. Go flipping figure. Yeah, there it is. There it is. And that's it. That's how you do it. And it just, it's ridiculous because it seems like someplace you're not supposed to be. Bam. Great turtle shield. These are always going to be some type of puzzle 
to get into. A lot of times I'll have a deal right up front. Seek three wise beasts. This is kind of important because that's all it tells you. Seek three wise beasts. Okay, well, it shows you right there. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to kill a turtle. But, they're just ghost turtles. They're already dead. Is that boy there. Then, if you're playing online, always gonna be something here, but you see that little ripple. Is that boy there. So that's two. So there's one more. Hiding. Is this him? Yeah, hiding in the bushes. There he is. So that's it. The seal has opened. 90% of these are just going to have a memory stone at the top, which is important because it upgrades the slots you use for your sorcerers and incantations. Upstairs. Like I said, this is the first castle and or boss I suggest to visit. Alright, even if you're not ready to do the castle yet, come through here. We're going to do a little side skirting around. we got to kill a couple enemies, but it's not too bad. So we're going to go get one of the best, other best big swords in the game, uh, especially early on. Um, so you just gotta go around to the left. You don't want to go straight down the middle or to the right because there's those guys on that pyre and there's a bunch of them that mess you up. Sneak around. You can summon your wolves to help you with the pumpkin head. And then we'll come all the way to the back. Climb up this ladder. Take out the one dude here because he's going to be following you if you don't. And sometimes he falls off. You just wait for him to come back up. Doop, 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 doop. There he is. Okay, so now you're up here and we're going to want to jump right off this edge down on to that deal. So like you can come that way, but you have to fight all those guys. We don't want to do that. Drop right down here and we'll go right in the doorway right in front of us. In here is where you want this chest. Always watch your back while you open your chest. Claymore. Boom. One of the other best weapons in the game. 16 strength, which is not a big ask, but it has a crazy good attack. Special ability, Lion's Claw. That tears some people up. That one's gonna be fairly important. There's a big boy in here that we gotta fight. There he is. Now he's a magic user. So he's gonna do a bunch of range to bull crap. But use our summons. And that's it. Having the summons is a game changer. Alright, we have the Demon Human staff. It's a good staff, not quite as good as a meteorite staff, but depending on the the type of spells you're using, it's a really good one. And we got Crystal Burst. It's kind of like a, a short range shotgun attack. And it's another church. And at most all churches, we find another sacred tier. All right, when you exit the church, immediately head to the right down this little hill. And there's gonna be some ruins in here. Run straight in here and just hop down. These stairs. Now there's gonna be a couple guys in here to fight. They're not too bad. You can summon the wolves. Just kind of keep them at a distance, but watch out for their well, their range attacks like that. Winged scythe. That is one of the best faith weapons in the entire game. It's got 55 bleed build up. It takes a bit of faith, but depending on who you stacked into, it's not unreasonable. It's got a good ranged attack. I think everybody winds up using this one time or another. 
and then mostly because of the freaking special here. Wop! Wop! It is good. It is, I, mean, I can't tell you. I mean, it, it's it's so good. It's so good. Alright. We're done with that area. So we got that stone sword key earlier. We use it here. This activates that ever gel, but there's kind of a a big boy in there. So we we'll want to make sure that we're all rested up before we go to attack him. All right, continuing on down the hill, there's another church and some headless guys out here. They aren't terrible, but they're not gonna mess with you. you don't mess with them. They're fairly easy, but they teleport. So you gotta be careful. So in here we find another side of grace and another sacred tear. Boom. Right outside the church here is another Evergel. Uh, the guy that's in it drops a very good talisman that we definitely want. However, he's super tough. He, he really is super tough. So um, if you want to give it a shot, you, you'll be fine. If you die, your, your runes will be outside. Um, you don't have to go back in and try to fight him and beat him. But uh, he's real tough. I tried a few times here and no, he got me. He got me every time. So that's up to you. All right, so down on the other side of the church we were just at, there's kind of a poison area with some weird dudes. You can run past and fight them. Anyways, you come in here, and this person should seem familiar. This is the actual body of the sorceress we talked to earlier. That her was just a projection. And it's a long time until you can do something with this, but make a note that she's here because she's a big main story quest, quest line. You all right, this is where we want to be. This is further down the road here on the coastline. This is the isolated merchant shack. He's going to sell us the lantern. Super important bit of kit. It does like the torch, but you don't have to hold it. You just turn it on and it lights everything up. I recommend putting it in our pouch area so it don't take up a item slot. All right, so from the shack, we run up the hill and we fight our first Ur tree boss. Uh, he's pretty tough at this point, but he's gonna drop some bubble tears for our flask. The ones that we really want at this point in the game. So we'll give him a few tries, you can use your summons. He's not too bad, he just has a bunch of real big heavy attacks. Uh, he has a little bit of magic BS, but should be able to get him at this point. Opaline bubble tier, crimson burst tier. That's the whole reason we did it, and that is more than worth it. The opaline tier negates damage for like one attack, almost to completely zero, and the crimson tier regenerates your health, and it does it quite a bit. Later on, there's spells and incantations you can get to do that, but for now, for especially for fighting bosses, this is this is OP. That's it. That is. Everything you need to get started. Some of those fights we did were pretty tough. If you're having trouble, you may not be ready for them yet. But everything, a lot of the stuff we did, we could just we just run around and grab. So the Morning Star, definitely grab that. You can upgrade it. You know, I've upgraded it to plus two real quick. Just the stuff that I've picked up. So that gives you a real good start. Uh, gives you a good blood loss bleed uh, build up. If you have the strength death requirements, or if you want, definitely Bloodhound Fang. Um, now, one thing I didn't mention is, see if I put this on, it says I have a heavy load whenever I roll. See, I'm rolling slower. Gives you a fat roll. You don't have as many iframes. Like, whenever you roll, you can roll through attacks. Well, you have a heavy, medium, and slow, and, and fast roll, and they give you more iframes. Depending on what it is. Heavy roll, you're only going to get a few. You're not going to move very far. You're not going to have very many iframes. So that's your equipment load up there. Uh, endurance helps your equipment load. So definitely pop some of that up. If you're ever worried about what any of these do, you just pop that map button when you're in here. You need an explanation. It shows you what everything does. I like to stay mid. Mid roll. Mid load. There's... 
Unless you're being ridiculous, you know, to get fast rolls. I mean, you have to have crazy endurance or just be wearing no kind of armor. Um, that's why the guy right outside the church there, that's the frost guy. I'll probably put him in there. I tried him a few times, couldn't beat him at this point. Um, he gives you a really good talisman that you take more damage, but it boosts up your endurance and all kind of other stuff. So you can actually wear heavier armor. So it negates the damage that you're going to take. Plus you get bonus stats for other things. And it's like getting 10 extra levels. So there's a few of those in the game. Those talismans, talismans are, are great. So we have the Morning Star, which is one I recommend for sure. Bloodhound Fang, if you're more of a strength dex build. The Flail's not terrible. It really isn't. If you just go in more dex, uh, it's kind of like the Morning Star. Uh, the Wing and Scythe for faith builds. Definitely, if you're going to do a faith build, push towards that. That's a really good starter weapon. Um, I used it for a while. Then, as soon as I got the uh, the Blasphemous Blade, which is, I think, the best weapon in the entire game. And I can't believe it. they haven't nerfed it any more than they have. Uh, that's what I used. So, we got a, a one range weapon. There's there's other bows. You can buy bows and things like that. The Hand Ballista isn't great because it takes a lot of strength. Once you hit that requirement, it's, it's really good. But if you're going to go ranged... Then get you a finger seal, do more of your incantations, or we have the meteorite, meteorite staff that's amazing along with the gravity and meteorite sorceries. So if you don't want to go, <clears throat> if you don't want to go to Kaelid and mess with all that and sneaking out of the tunnel and going through all the rot, then go down, grab your demon human staff. It, it works fine. It's, it's not that big a deal. It, 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 it's a good one. Try to grab your torch. Even though we have the lantern, even though we got the lantern, the torch does a lot better. I prefer 100% damage shields, but you got your other shields to play with. Spells, we got the poison armament, which we haven't had to use yet because we, we didn't get a finger seal. Didn't think about it. Should have got a guy that had a finger seal. But we got the shotgun blast. This kind of a sneaky ambush shard puts it behind him and shoots towards him. It's a fun one. I don't know how useful it is. But the rock sling, that's going to be your bread and butter for sure. If you're doing a, a sorcery build, you have got to go down and get this. And the meteorite staff. Because the meteorite staff is going to just amplify the damage that this one does. Poison mist for incantations. Very good. Poison, poison buildup is always great. You guys your poison armament, same thing. But no matter how you play... You gotta grab this early on, Frenzy Flame. It's a good AoE. It does a fan damage. It does a lot of damage. It doesn't do as much as it originally did because it was kind of broken. So they actually had to nerf it quite a bit. That tells you how good this thing was. And that's it, man. No matter what kind of build you're playing, that's enough kind of to get you started. You've seen a lot of the enemies. You've explored a lot of the world already. Fought some bosses. Definitely go down. Do Castle Morn in the bottom. Uh, I recommend putting your stuff into faith. The faith builds are crazy in this game. But you have now, you have a pretty good option no matter what you want to do. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if you get frustrated, put it down for a little bit, but come back. If you're frustrated on a boss, go somewhere else. Do something else. It's definitely worth it. The game's worth your time. So hopefully that's helpful. I don't know if everything made it in. And this was about three hours long, so I had to cut a, cut a bunch of stuff out. But we got all the main stuff there. Um, so, yeah, have fun, man. Don't let anybody tell you how to play it. You want to use summons? Use summons. You want to invite your friends? That's fine. It's a game. That's what it's meant for. It's meant to have fun. So, hope you have fun. Later.